This is Monday, February the 22nd, and this is World History. So, we now know how all of the modern-day countries in South America were created. The one country we have been avoiding is Brazil. Brazil is the only country in South America that remained loyal to Portugal. Now, in the late 19th century, that would be 1800s, Brazil would break away from Portugal, and Brazil would have the largest population of any country in South America today. This here is a video that deals with Brazil. North of Brazil, we have land masses that after the 1860s will be taken over by the British, the French, and the Dutch. These countries are usually referred to as the Guyanas. For the rest of today, we're going to concentrate on Mexico. Now, Mexico, or what the Spanish called New Spain, was the last of the Spanish-speaking countries to break away from Spain. Mexico had tried in 1804 and tried again in 1820 to rebel from Spain. The first revolt was held by Father Miguel Hidalgo. He tried to unify the peasants to overthrow the government, but they were unsuccessful. In 1820, another priest, Father Jose Morales, is going to organize the presence again. Again, the revolt will fail. Finally, in the mid-1820s, two military forces led by two different Creoles, these are Spanish-speaking landowners, are going to unify their opposition to Spain and a declaration of independence will be signed. The Spanish would lose the last part of their empire in the New World. They would lose great wealth, they would lose an agricultural source, and Spain will develop into a second-class country following the Napoleonic Wars. The newly freed lands will retain their Spanish language and their loyalty to the Catholic Church. Now today, after the Chinese language, Spanish is the most sp spoken language on planet Earth. The Christian faith is the largest faith on planet Earth. Now of the Christian faith, the largest division are those who are Catholics, and the largest number of Catholics are found in the former Spanish controlled regions. Mexico, though, has not been immune from problems that were seen in earlier independent lands. Land ownership and government problems will continue in the 1800s to present day. Most of the people in these lands were peasants. They, owed, they owned nothing. They had been told to produce a particular item for the Spanish, and that's why they were allowed to live there. Now, during the revolution, those who led the revolution spoke of land reform. They spoke of individual freedoms. In the old Spanish system, the Creoles, who were called Calderos, ran the haciendas in the absence of the Spanish government. Even though Spain owned the land, the Caldeos saw the land as their own. When the revolution spoke of land reform, the Caldeos would be the one who were giving up the land. They would lose money, they would lose prestige. And so in every revolution you will have your winners and you will have your losers. The Spanish had done very little to unite the various viceroys. They had built few roads. Each of the newly formed countries after their independence 
would create a system of highways to unite their country. This would cost a great deal of money. Now, who's going to pay for these improvements? Well, that would be the landowners. But the landowners are now the peasants. And the peasants have very little to begin with. And now they have to spend for infrastructure. The caudillos in Mexico are going to band together. And they're going to take over the newly formed legislature. Now, the legislature of the new country of Mexico stated that only citizens who could hold, who could vote and hold owner and hold main office were those who had land and paid taxes on the land or had businesses and paid taxes on the business. To ensure that Creole stayed in power, each country would elect a strongman. His job was to deny individual freedoms to the peasants and keep the property in the hands of the Creole class. As long as the divisions existed between Creoles and peasants, no country would ever find peace. Each country would open to economic influence of wealthier nations. Now, I like to remember that in Mexico, between the revolution and the beginning of the 20th century, Mexico was ruled by three dominant personalities. Personality number one is this man here, San and Santa Ana de Lopez. He became leader of Mexico in 1823, and in a process of reorganizing his country, he went to war against American citizens living in what is now Texas. He won a great victory in San Antonio at a place called the Alamo, but his army was then defeated outside of present-day Houston at the Battle of San Jacinto. In the 1930s, Texas had gained its independence, but President Jackson would not allow Texas to enter the Americas because Jackson feared a civil war. Texas would break the, it break the balance between free states and slave states, and Jackson feared that this imbalance would cause a war. This here is a video about this time period. The United States believed in a, in a process called manifest destiny. Manifest destiny is the belief that God has chosen the American people to rule from sea to sea. Now, most of the land that the American people coveted was land that was owned by Mexico. Now, in the 1840s, this would be during the administration of President James K. Polk, there was a border dispute over the Rio Grande River. Americans, under Generals Taylor and Scott, would capture northern Mexico and then Mexico City. Santa Ana would be forced to give up land called the Mexican Session. Now, the Mexican Session is modern-day New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, and parts of Utah and Colorado. Santa Ana will be sent into exile after this defeat. And so we end one of our strong personalities, and we're about ready for our second strong personality. This video here talks about Santa Ana. Now, at this time, we're going to do a couple of worksheets. We're going to do a walkout worksheet, but we're also going to go onto our Google Classroom, and we're going to do a geography worksheet. So please make sure that you do both. Tomorrow, we're going to look at the second strong man to rule Mexico. On Wednesday, we're going to watch a video about him. On Thursday, we're going to look at Canada. 
And then I believe if everything goes right, we probably will have some type of a quiz on Friday, the 26th of February. So again, this is where we'll stop today.